Hello, my name is Phil Suk Kim, and I recently joined ARPA-E as a program director. My general interest is in novel materials and engineered interfaces for energy storage systems and technologies for electrification and deep decarbonization of the building sector. One of the problems I am interested in solving is matching the electricity supply and demand in highly electrified world. This problem is getting worse as we accelerate the adoption of renewable electricity and sector electrification and decarbonization. Through this webinar, I'd like to describe this problem and encourage you to think about how we can solve this problem, particularly focused on demand flexibility technologies, which I will describe in detail. Here's the outline of this webinar. I will describe the background and the origin of so-called the duck curve problem. Why is it getting worse? What are the grid side approaches that are in place and under development? And what potential approaches we could take from the demand side, namely demand flexibility that can provide commercially viable load shifting and dispatchable peak load shaving technologies. I will then dive deeper into developing thermal energy storage systems or TES systems in short, as an example approach to achieve demand flexibility in buildings, then discuss key constraints and development approach, key questions to understanding the value of any TES technologies, their advantages and barriers to commercialization, and then system level and material level technical parameters to consider. Then I will conclude this webinar with some open questions for your inputs while framing this very hard and important problem we must solve. If you have a big idea that could potentially make a step change, RPIE would be interested in listening to you, even if such ideas are too radical and too risky to be tested by anyone else. My contact information will be given at the end of this webinar. The Ducker problem first published by the California Independent System Operator in 2013, is an alert for us on the growing mismatch between the available solar energy and electricity demand around the clock. This curve shows the total electricity demand as a function of time for a day. During the day, when the sun is shining, we have more electricity generated than needed. But in the evening, the solar electricity generated from the grid cannot catch up with the rapidly increasing demand. Solar and wind energy generation do not coincide with the fluctuating demand curve. Currently, we are balancing the grid to the fluctuating electricity demand by keeping power plants capable of quickly ramping up or down. These peak power plants rely on fossil fuels to smooth the intermittency of renewable power and thus contribute to significant greenhouse gas emissions. In some cases, the renewable generation even has to be curtailed during off-peak hours as there is no immediate demand for it. This supply and demand mismatch problem or the duck curve problem will become worse and spread outside of California with increasing penetration of renewable electricity across the US. Last year, the U.S. saw a record high peak demand that reached over 700 gigawatt. The conventional way to address this problem is to expand the generation capacity as well as the transmission and distribution infrastructure. However, that would be the most expensive and inefficient option since we would need to design our grid to handle the maximum peak that is expected to reach one terawatt by 2030. Along with the electrification of power generation via increased penetration of renewables, the demand side is expected to significantly electrify too. This includes substantial electrification of the building sector, which is already a large contributor to electricity consumption. As shown in this famous chart, the building sector uses about 75% of generated electricity and is responsible for about 80% of the electricity demand during peak hours. In buildings, more than half of the energy demand 
is in the form of thermal energy used for space conditioning and for domestic hot water. Although presently, much of this energy comes from fossil fuels, such as natural gas and oil, significant electrification of HVAC systems is expected to happen, which will likely involve rapid adoption of electric heat pumps because of their high efficiency. Nevertheless, this electrification will further exacerbate the overall supply demand mismatch problem I spoke of earlier. To address this growing problem, we need to start thinking about new technological advancements such as energy storage systems. On the supply side, there are conventional energy storage systems like flywheels and pumped hydro, and also a number of novel grid-scale energy storage systems being developed and utilized. Examples of thermal energy storage systems include molten salt storage, sand as a thermal storage medium, metal oxide-based thermochemical storage, metal hydride storage, thermophotovoltaic systems, and so on. Large-scale electrical energy storage systems such as flow batteries and lithium-ion batteries have been deployed and their cost is going down, giving us another option for storage. How about we look at the demand side to solve the Ducker problem? Certainly, distributed generations, demand response, smart controls, and electric vehicle charging management are viable strategies that can still be significantly expanded, but are there new technologies that could provide demand flexibility? For example, since the majority of energy need is thermal in buildings, what if we were to have advanced thermal energy storage systems in our buildings? Such systems could provide flexibility to shift the load, reduce the peak if made to be dispatchable, and if combined with heat pumps, they could also effectively increase the overall COP of heat pumps. Let's dive further into developing TES systems to achieve demand flexibility. The main constraints to enable rapid adoption of TES systems in over 100 millions of existing homes and commercial buildings in the US would be the following. Upfront capital and installation costs for the building owners, and the space needed for such a system. Now, how do we develop cost-effective TES systems with a small footprint? We see that the pathway to developing advanced TES systems can be divided into three tiers as shown in this slide. Materials development, system integration, control and operation. We would need to develop better energy storage materials then put them into a storage system that is likely to be seamlessly integrated with heat pumps. And when we have such systems installed, we would need to figure out how to effectively control and operate them. Such an approach will require highly multidisciplinary team efforts combining expertise from material science, thermal engineering, controls and systems engineering. The team should organically work defining the system requirements from the control side to inform a co-design effort and the material requirements from the system side. And in turn, new materials innovations can drive new system design and integration and better system capability should allow improved controls and operations. There could be many new TES technologies you could propose in order to effectively evaluate how compelling any potential new TES technology is, we would need to understand the systems level justifications, including the techno-economic basis. Specifically, what scenarios are assumed? Makeup of the grid, the level of the electrification of demand side, building characteristics, climate zones, market information such as projected variable rate electricity plans, grid price signal, weather data, historic usage data. What is the resulting peak load shift over various time frames? How often would the TES be called upon at the typical duty cycle? 
What requirements does this impose on LCOS and other system level metrics? What is the value proposition and revenue models? Here are some initially identified advantages of TES systems as demand flexibility solutions. There is net energy saving potential, opportunity to utilize diurnal temperature swing by integrating with heat pumps, better exergy usage, flexibility to provide long duration storage, opportunity for coordinated control of aggregate TES systems, and utilizing off-peak electricity to charge them. Some of the identified barriers to commercialization are the capex and installation cost and the space requirements we already touched on. In addition, system integration and controls remain as one of the main challenges. Avoiding complexity to make sure unskilled people can install, operate, and provide maintenance is another remaining barrier. Now the question is, are there new ideas and technologies that can overcome these challenges? What specific parameters should we define and consider? For the system design and integration, the inputs from the control should be reflected to define the system level requirements and identify what needs to be improved with component level target parameters such as volumetric energy density at system level, capex and installation cost, O&M cost, service life, form factor, better mass transport and thermal interface, insulation, round trip efficiency, response time. Again, this is not a comprehensive list, but a list of some relevant parameters. We anticipate that the design considerations to integrate TES systems with heat pumps will lead to some potential new ideas that can increase the system level performance and reduce the system size. For example, new approaches for simultaneous, simultaneous heat and mass transfer, novel thermal interfaces including thermal switches and insulation materials, novel fabrication and manufacturing methods, to name a few. Finally, the system design requirements should set the metrics that new materials should meet. For the materials innovation, we need to develop new materials optimized for the volumetric energy density, operating temperature, manufacturability and cost, cyclability, safety, and the processability into particular shapes. We could also think about computational tools to aid new material discovery and novel characterization tools and technologies. We would also need to establish standard test conditions and unify the languages used so we can compare different materials apples to apples manner in relevant conditions. Some of the recent development in materials include novel sorption desorption pairs involving MOFs, new types of heat transfer fluids, novel inorganic PCMs, surface functionalized microporous materials, and novel composite materials to name a few. And these innovations in materials can in turn enable new ideas in the system level development. In summary, there is mounting pressure to match the electricity supply and demand for the highly electrified future. One potential approach to tackle this problem is providing demand flexibility focused on the building sector, where the majority of energy demand is in the form of thermal energy. If we can develop new solutions that enable demand flexibility, such as thermal energy storage systems that bring us load shifting and dispatchable peak shaping capabilities, then this could entirely change the picture of our future energy landscape. The impact will be huge. The electrification and associated decarbonization can happen rather quickly while avoiding the cost of overbuilding the grid capacity, reserve power, and TND capacity. Since this webinar is not targeted for any particular technology, but rather it is intended to shout out this big question, I would like to conclude this webinar with some open questions. Are TES systems the real bottleneck to realizing demand flexibility? If so, what key technological barriers do we need to overcome? 
If not, are there better technical solutions with low cost and great value proposition? What should we prioritize to solve this problem? With all these said, here's my wish list for a TES system that I believe could solve this problem. A packaged TES system storing both heat and cold that is integrated with a grid interactive electrical heat pump system and the system level energy density is on the order of megajoules per liter with storage cost less than $10 per kilowatt hour thermal and the service life over 20 years providing diurnal load shift. I think given the particular constraints such as cost and space for the existing buildings in the US, transformational new ideas would need to be developed and combined to solve this problem. As promised, here's my contact information, and if you have some great ideas, we would like to listen to you. Thank you. <music>